As I travel all over America for book tour, nearly every day the landscape outside my window changes, from the desert to the bays, from the forest to the plains, from the swamp to the mountains. And as this beautiful land of ours unfurls before me, I, I am staggered, as I so often am, by all the majestic places a corpse can decompose. How would a body in a desert decompose? How would a body in an ocean decompose? How would a body in lime jello decompose? How a corpse gets from flesh to bone and how long it takes can vary drastically depending on the corpse's environment. After death, you might notice that your body is going through some changes. Those changes can be confusing. But don't worry, there's no reason to be shy or embarrassed about decomposition. It's perfectly normal, and it happens to everyone. We've talked a lot before about your basic decay, say, in a natural burial, the pumpkin spice latte of putrefaction. But what if a body was left unburied in, say, a forest? An unburied body can decompose two to four times faster than an unembalmed body that's been buried six feet under. It's all about temperature and oxygen. Even a body buried under only three feet of earth in a forest with moderate temperature and humidity will decompose extremely fast. Another big factor are scavengers. We're talking happy hour at nature's buffet. As soon as a corpse hits the ground, blowflies are laying eggs on and in it. Laying up to 250 eggs at a time, within 24 hours, thousands, even millions of blowfly maggots are happily chomping away at a corpse, accelerating decomposition. The maggots mature and become adult flies that lay more eggs, continuing the cycle and attracting more scavengers. Spiders, beetles, mites, wasps, ants all join the feeding frenzy, helping to consume the body that much faster. The corpse is very quickly teeming with scavengers, and the body is getting toasty. With all that feasting going on, both from scavengers and bacteria, a body's internal temperature can raise as much as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Maggots will actually migrate back and forth from the core so as to avoid getting cooked. A corpse at any stage of decomposition is not only a tasty treat to insects, but also to local woodland creatures. Birds, rats, possums, raccoons, among others, are likely to show up and want their piece of the pie. Or thigh. A white-tailed deer in San Marcos, Texas has even been caught gnawing on a corpse. We see you, deer. In as little as 50 days, a human corpse can be reduced to little more than dry, inedible flesh bits, moldy skin, and bones. And though any grass or vegetation under the corpse has died due to chemicals like antibiotics in the body and nitrogen toxicity, there is a little island of organically rich, fertile soil under and around the corpse. The rumors are true. Corpses make great compost. But not all forests are the same. In a hot, humid, rainforest-like environment in Florida or Hawaii, a body can decompose in as little as two weeks. Researchers have observed pig cadavers in hot and humid places reduced to bones in less than a week. In turn, a very cold forest with torrential downpour can actually slow down decomposition. Heavy rain might wash away maggots, and extreme cold could kill flies and inhibit bacteria, slowing the decomposition process to a crawl for months, even years. But what if the environment was much drier and much hotter? What happens to a body left unburied in a desert? Mummification! That's what. At first, decomposition speeds up. 
In a high heat, low humidity environment, the initial stages of decomposition, the bloating, the liquefying, the oozing, are accelerated. More so, the sand a corpse might rest on in a desert helps to further pull moisture from the body, like kitty litter, or those little silica gel packets you're not supposed to eat, and maggots go into overdrive, eating while the eating's good. Instead of turning green or black, Corpses in an arid environment often turn a bright traffic cone orange. The skin becomes brittle like parchment or vellum, clinging to bones, and carrion beetles, hungry for dried up flesh, eventually replace maggots as the tenants of the corpse. Under the right circumstances, a corpse in the desert can become a mummy in somewhere between 11 days and 12 weeks. Once mummified, a body could last for years, even centuries. Tephonomy trivia. You'll mummify faster if you're clothed as opposed to being naked. Fabrics tend to help wick moisture away from a corpse, so if you're intent on becoming a desert mummy, plan to die in your yoga pants. Oh, and tephonomy is the study of organisms as they decay and fossilize. All right, so we've covered land decay. What about water corpses? First, the corpse stiffens from the head to the toes within the first 12 hours, and then relaxes from the toes to the head over the next 24 hours. The skin then pimples, then both swells and wrinkles into something known as washerwoman's skin. <laughs> How quaint. Cold water might inhibit bloating for some time, keeping the corpse from floating to the surface to be eaten by larger predators. Additionally, the fats in the body might turn into adipocere, a soapy, waxy substance that discourages putrefaction, thus preserving the body. The colder the water, the longer a corpse stays intact, with some underwater corpses remaining recognizable for weeks, even years. In warmer water, the stomach will bloat and the hands and feet will balloon, maybe falling off. Layers of the skin start to come apart, the fingernails and hair start to slide off, and the stomach will burst, seeping greenish bronze fluids. Of course, not every corpse makes it to this state. While there may not be maggots or carrion beetles underwater, there are a large number of scavengers. From fish, to sharks, to crabs, to sea lice, unless a corpse is somehow stuck somewhere, like an underwater cavern, or a very low oxygen environment, it's highly unlikely that it will last more than a month without getting cleaned to the bone by scavengers. And those are the ways we decay, the ways we decay now, the ways we decay today, deathlings. So the next time you're hiking in your local forest or tanning on your favorite beach, I hope you look around at nature's majesty and consider how you too might decay. Wouldn't that be nice? Where, where would you like to decay? This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. We're talking happy hour at nature's buffet.